What's up everyone? It's Luke from Wild Pro. Today I'm here with Craig from Heffernan Construction. This morning Craig pulled into the driveway and he had some project in the back of his vehicle. So Craig, tell us a little bit about what you're working on. Uh, I have uh, in Erie, Pennsylvania, right on Lake Erie, I have a uh, pool deck. It has a uh, 12 by 12 bottom deck. It's a set of stairs that go up to a pool deck. Um, I'm almost done with it, but uh, the building inspector said that I had to have a safety gate installed. Mm -hmm. So I decided to build that gate myself because I looked everywhere for someone to build. It's it's like seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. Is it really? Build that gate, yeah. So what I did is I went uh, I went to Gene Davis Sales. They sell metal wholesale, okay. and I picked up some inch and a half aluminum square tube uh, for the uh, tops and the sides of the rail. Yeah. And for the balusters, I used half inch aluminum round tube. Okay. All right, for the balusters. And this gate has to match the Trex rails. The Trex rails are white on the top and the bottom rail, and they have black balusters. So I need to paint the top and the sides white, mm -hmm. and the balusters have to be black. So did you cut all this material yourself? Yes, I, uh, I actually took it home, and I uh, set up the miter box, and I used the 82 fine cut blade uh, into my miter box, uh, cut all the metal myself, uh, 45s on all these. And I also, uh, I also brought some uh, scrap pieces to show you how I cut them. And uh, you said to put, uh, yeah. put the bevel on there so when we weld that joint together, fill goes even and I can sand it even and it'll look much more professional and uh, still be as strong. Yeah, so the idea is, is we're going to weld this, you're going to sand it off, and then this whole thing will be painted. So you won't yeah. even see these welds, right? Oh, I'm right? excited. I can't wait. Yeah. I mean, for uh, $130 for all the material from Gene Davis, plus you're doing it for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well that's watching. why he wants me to buy my own welder. Good. Huh? All right, so you brought these pieces with you today. You got them mitered up. You've got the bevels put on them. You want me to teach you how to weld some aluminum? Oh, I'm scared, but I could do it. <laughs> so basically, we just I'm going to start this arc, okay? With aluminum, it's important that we preheat both sides of the material. So if you get one of these pieces hotter than the other, one is going to melt before the other one. So sometimes what you have to do is manipulate this tungsten between one piece and the other to shift that arc to make sure you're getting adequate penetration, okay, does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so here we go. All right, so now that you saw what I did on that first pass, why don't you go ahead, take your time with this torch. I'll help guide you and try and make this weld on the other side of this, okay? Right, yeah. So the idea is that like right there, you're gonna see a little puddle establish on that base material. Without the, without the filler? In? Correct, without oh. filler. Now here's the deal, that will never bridge that gap. So the filler is required for you to bridge that gap in there. But the point is you have to get an even puddle on both sides. You need just a little puddle. It can't be a big puddle, because right. as soon as it gets to be a big puddle, it blows through, all right? Oh. So a tiny I puddle on the it. left and the right, yeah. And if it starts to get too hot, back off the pedal, let it cool down a little bit, okay? Yeah. Okay, and then get your bearings. Listen, keep that tungsten close. You can't get it close enough, okay? Uh, I pull off more heat by backing off the... No, it adds more heat. The longer the arc length, the hotter the arc. Get it right there and lift it just a little off the plate and then flip your hood down and push your pedal. I'm gonna go this way. Yep. All right, ready? Craig, so what you just experienced is what happens when you put too much heat into one side of the material and not the other, okay? So you had one side of that material just essentially disappear. You did good. You finished blowing the hole through. Yeah. Nice work. <laughs> All right. Well, when you weld the gate up, I, I, uh, this is tougher than I thought. So you want me to weld this up for you? Yeah, I think you better. All right. All right. <laughs> I guarantee you, I'll do this one. 
After quite a few practice pieces, Craig was able to get the technique down. His welds ended up looking really good. Moving on to the gate, Craig had already built a jig and had it in the back of his SUV. We simply carried this jig into the weld shop and it made life so much easier when I tacked this together. With the gate in the jig, I went around and tacked all four corners. We then flipped it and I did the same thing on the other side. Next, I welded all the grooves for the 45 degree miters on the corners. When welding aluminum, the puddle looks a little different than mild steel. I like to compare it to seeing a mirror. When the aluminum looks like a mirror, that's when your puddle is developed and you can add filler material. The miters came out looking good. Craig will sand these down and paint them later on. Welding these round balusters was even more challenging. I found that to achieve the highest quality weld, I needed to only do 90 degrees at a time. This was difficult because I had to reposition myself so many different times. These joints were difficult to get into. I'm glad I used that number 10 gas lens. It allowed me to have my tungsten stand out a lot further than normal without getting contamination. I was really thankful for the CK torch. It has a flex head, so I was able to position it exactly where I needed it for each weld. Welding aluminum can be extremely difficult, so don't get frustrated if you have trouble at first. Just keep practicing. Once your muscle memory is down and your technique of adding filler is correct, things will go much smoother. The welds on this gate turned out really good. We had a little contamination here and there, but not too bad. We didn't blow any holes through the gate and most of the welds came out really smooth. There should be minimal cleanup for Craig before painting. I got a chance to take a ride over to Craig's project. I helped him install the gate and I got to see it all painted. The customer was extremely happy. This is a heavy duty gate that should last a really long time. All right, everybody. So we had a pretty good day today. Uh, did some welding with the TIG 200 on AC. Uh, got this aluminum gate all welded up. Came out really nice. <laughs> Craig did a good job. He learned how to weld. Uh, had a little trouble at first, but that's okay. We got him squared away, so everything was good. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Hopefully you learned a little something about welding aluminum or building a gate. Thanks to Craig for coming out today. Had a great time with him. So take a minute, hit that like and subscribe button under the video. You'll be notified the minute we release latest content. Stay tuned for more videos.